Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, short video today from me. This is my final video. My name is Gerardo Gonzalez and I teach at Lane Tech College Prep. And today I'll be going through how to submit your response along with just some final, um, some final touch ups that you should uh, do before completing your paper. So uh, I'll be walking you through the process, through the step-by-step -step process to submit your final paper today. Um, okay, so by this point, hopefully you have completed your paper. So you've um, had a couple of drafts, you have revised your paper a few times, and you have had someone else read your paper a couple of times to ensure that this is the version of the paper that you want to submit. Um, so just as a final check, of your document before submitting. These are some of the things that you should, um, that you should be doing to ensure that uh, the version of the paper that you submit is actually ends up looking what you want it to look like. So um, most importantly, we want to make sure that you're removing any identifying information from your paper. So your name, the name of your school, anything like that should be removed from your paper. Okay, so we don't want to see your name or school. Um, on your title page, we want to uh, make sure that your paper has three things, the title of your paper, your research question, and your word count, okay? And then throughout your paper, we want to ensure that uh, you have consistency on your citations. All of your citations are in your work cited and vice versa. We went over this in the previous video. Um, running a spell check, consistency of, of font, font size, et cetera, and I'll be walking you through that in a bit. Um, for our works cited page or a reference page, uh, ensuring everything's in alphabetical order and making sure everything is consistent. And then finally, making sure that the formatting of your um, PDF is correct. So I'm gonna walk you through that in um, a second. So on my screen right now, I have a sample paper uh, that one of my students wrote earlier in this year. And so um, hopefully this is what your paper ends up looking like. The formatting of it is dependent on your style. So if you're using MLA or APA, it's going to look a little bit different. So just follow the directions of your teacher. But um, in this case, this is what a final paper might end up looking like. And so you've been working on the same document for a while. So sometimes um, we have a few different formatting things that come up. One of the... Um, one of the first things that I want to make a reference to is how did you get from one page to the next? So if we have our cover page, most of you probably just hit enter, 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 like 30 times to get to the next page, right? To get here. Um, and unfortunately, when we save documents as a PDF, sometimes that messes up our formatting. So. I want to show you a different way to get to a different page. So um, instead of hitting enter 30 different times to get to the next page, what we're going to do, we're going to start uh, inserting page breaks. So uh, to insert a page break, if you're working off of Google Docs, you just go to insert, break, and then page break. You can also use control enter to do it as well as a shortcut. So doing a page break would just um, makes the formatting a lot easier and a lot more manageable when we um, convert everything over as a PDF. We don't necessarily need these um, spaces here. So you can just erase those. Remember, we're just focusing on word count. We're not really focusing on um, page count here. We wanna make sure that your indentations are all consistent. So we're just looking to make your paper look pretty. Okay. And so um, again, you can see here that based off of all of those uh, different enter keys that we've been doing, it really messes with our uh, formatting here. So I just want to enter another page break. This time I'm just going to hit control enter and that'll give me a nice page break here. Okay. And so, um, Sometimes, and these are just paying attention to detail. If you see here, my font is uh, Times New Roman. And then when I get down to my reference page, 
all of a sudden it turned into Arial. And sometimes that happens because um, maybe we were working on two different documents and the two different documents had two different um, fonts that were selected or maybe we're just copying and pasting stuff over that was in a different font. So I just wanna make sure that everyone um, is submitting their papers just to make sure that everything looks consistent because it just makes it look a lot more professional. So to do that easily, uh, you just select all of your text. So it, uh, as a shortcut, it's uh, control A. And then you can just change the font to make it all the same. Okay, so now I've changed everything over to a Times New Roman. And I wanna make sure that everything is the same font size. So I'm gonna put whatever I want my font size to be. Let's just say it's gonna be 12. And then once it's like that, now our paper is ready to convert over to a PDF. So mind you, by this point, and you should be doing this on your own, uh, you are going and just doing a double check to make sure that all of your citations are in order, okay? And then there's just one here, okay? So if you see here, sometimes this, this just happens instead of it, just, there's just like an unnecessary letter here, okay? Or Kennedy here. And then if you see here, Kennedy is spelled incorrectly. So I wanna just change that, okay? And then uh, you should always do this on your own. You should do this on your own even before uh, having someone else take a look at your paper. We wanna do a spelling and grammar check. Okay, so on Google Docs, you just go to tools, spelling and grammar, and then you would go through this process on your own here, okay? So um, it's gonna give you, Google's gonna give you a bunch of different uh, recommendations for you. And sometimes you wanna take these and sometimes you don't, okay? So it just sort of depends on the type of writer that you are, but many times uh, it's going to make it, make your paper, make your sentence structure, a lot, uh, a lot better, okay? And it might also save you a couple of words. So if you're pressed for words, that might be something for you to, um, to consider here, okay? So everyone should make sure that they are doing this because there are certainly, um, certainly uh, issues that sometimes we overlook as writers, okay? So I won't go through all of that. It, once you're done and once you've gone through all of these uh, steps that I had up on the screen earlier, you're ready to uh, download your paper as a PDF. And so to download your paper as a PDF, you're just gonna go to, if you're working on Google, file, download, PDF, okay? So um, on the digital portfolio, and I'll show you this in a second, you can only upload uh, your file as a PDF. So this is how I want you to, download it. And then once it downloads, it should open up. And then you just wanna make sure that you're checking to make sure that um, everything, is, nothing got shifted over as a result of it um, transferring to a PDF. Okay, so I checked this over before and this looks good. And so I have my name of my file up here. It says dummy IWA, okay. And uh, if you're working on Word, I'll show you how to uh, download that as a PDF as well. Same file, Word document. You're also just gonna go to File. And here you're gonna save as Word document. You're just gonna change that to a PDF and then you're just gonna save that and it'll save it as a PDF there as well, okay? So we're just making sure that you're saving your document as a PDF and you're making sure that you remember where you have that file. So um, once you have everything downloaded and once you have everything ready to go, you are going to be ready to submit your final submission up to uh, the, uh, the digital portfolio. So most of you should have um, logged into the digital portfolio already as this is where you get access to EBSCO. So if, in case you uh, have forgotten where to go, it's digitalportfolio.collegeboard.org. And once you log into that uh, URL, uh, it's gonna take you to the sign-in screen. You're gonna use your, sign -in, your College Board information. Uh, 
If you forgot your username or if you forgot your password, um, there are spaces for you to, um, to look at here, okay? So you can just click uh, and go through the steps to retrieve your information. Uh, everyone should already have an account, okay? So um, this shouldn't be an issue for you, but if it is, you can also sign up for an account here. And once you log in with your information, it's gonna take you to um, the uh, sort of the home page of the digital portfolio. And this is what it's gonna end up looking like. I wanna point, point you to the left-hand side where um, my mouse is sort of circling right here. We have our two performance task assessment titles. We have our team project and presentation, and we have our individual research-based essay and presentation. For the IWA, and I, like, I really, really want to emphasize this, for the IWA, you will submit your paper under individual research-based essay and presentation. Do not accidentally submit your IRR into this assignment. Uh, it's kind of a headache to return the paper back to you. So if we just do it correctly the first time, you won't run into these issues. So submit your IWA to the individual research-based essay and presentation. I'm gonna take you there um, in a bit. So um, once we log in, what you're gonna see is this screen. Okay, so once you're logged in, you're gonna click on individual research-based essay and presentation. And then that'll have a little drop down menu and it'll bring you to this uh, individual, you're gonna click on individual written argument and it'll take you down to this um, page. Once you're here, you're gonna be able to upload uh, your final document. So you've edited everything down and you're ready to submit your final version. To upload a document, you're just gonna click on upload new, select your file, And then you're just gonna click submit. And once you uh, submit the file, it'll upload. And then um, you'll have access, you'll have the ability to run an originality report with turnitin.com. So if, if you click on run originality right away, you're probably gonna get a message that's, that says that your file is being processed by Turnitin. If this is what you see, just check back in a few minutes. It usually just takes a few minutes. Um, so you can just come back afterward to look at that originality. I know that there are many schools that have their own uh, turnitin.com account that's separate from the one that the College Board uh, offers to students. So if you have a turnitin.com account with your, with your school, and if your teacher has had you upload uh, your paper to that turnitin account, and then you come in and you submit it to this Turnitin account, um, the paper here is gonna come up as 100% similar to another paper. If that, if that happens, that is, uh, that's nothing that you should be concerned about, okay? So uh, it's just flagging your paper as being similar to your other paper, but Turnitin doesn't know that you're the same person. So um, this is nothing to be concerned about. This happens a lot. Uh, turn it in is not a plagiarism checker. It's a similarity checker. So it's just checking to see how similar your paper is to another paper. You can, you can upload as many versions of your paper to uh, the digital portfolio as you want. Um, and the only paper that ends up getting sent to the College Board is the final paper that you upload. So if you upload it and if you accidentally realize that um, hey, there are a couple of things that are coming up as similar that I didn't know were gonna come up as similar. You can, um, you can make edits to that document before you, before you click on this submit final button. So don't click on submit final until you know that you're absolutely ready to submit your final version. In this case, let's say that I am ready. I'm ready to submit my paper. I'm gonna click on submit final. Once you click on submit final, you're gonna, um, this box is going to appear and it's gonna have you click on view file before you can click on any of these boxes here. So you're gonna to wanna to open the file and then um, do a final, final check, maybe a final read of what this final paper is actually gonna end up looking like. 
Once you have viewed the file, you have verified this is absolutely the final version that I want to submit. You're going to go through each of these statements to ensure um, that you agree with them. So you reviewed an, the uploaded file to ensure that it's the correct version. Yes, we have. We have confirmed that the file does not contain my name or any other person, personally identifying information. You understand that you won't be able to make any changes once you complete the final submission process. Click on next. You affirm that the work uh, you're submitting is your own and that you have read and understood the AP capstone policy on plagiarism and falsification or fabrication of information. And you can click on this link and it'll take you to what that looks like in case your teacher hasn't uh, gone through this with you. And then you affirm that you have read the overview and directions for the AP capstone performance tasks. You will click submit. I'm not going to do that here since this is not the actual version that my student wants to submit. You're going to click on submit and then it'll take you to this page. So on this page, once you actually submit your final, you're going to see this screen appear. On the first end, what we want to see when you submit are two black check marks, okay? Two black check marks, one for the IRR, one for the IWA. Once you see this, this means that your paper has been officially submitted to the College Board. So congratulations, you are done. If you end up seeing an orange triangle, what this means is that you have only uploaded a draft to the digital portfolio and that nothing is actually getting sent to the College Board. The only thing that will be graded will be that final submission. So if you accidentally forget to click submit before the new deadline, nothing is going to get sent to the college board and you won't receive a score for that piece of the assessment. So please, please, please make sure that you are uh, double checking to ensure that your paper has actually been submitted to the college board. So we don't want to see this. We want to see this, two black check marks. Okay. So um, our goal today was to learn the steps required to submit a properly formatted paper. Next steps, go through the steps on your own if you haven't done so already. Submit your paper and then congratulations, you are done with the IWA. So well done. Um, one more video though, Mrs. Malloy is going to do a recap of the individual research report. So um, be sure to check that out. That's all for me. Thanks.